So you may have been diagnosed with a condition called H. pylori. You could be wondering, what the heck is this? What is going on? Why do I have this bacteria in my gut? In today's video, we do a deep dive on exactly what you need to know about H. pylori. We'll discuss exactly what is it. We'll discuss how is it spread or how you got it. We'll discuss the symptoms of an H. pylori infection. We'll discuss how we diagnose it. And we'll discuss risk and preventions of H. pylori. In this video, I'm not going to discuss the treatment options because the treatment options are changing and I want to do a more deeper dive on that video. If you want to get that information, let me know in the comments down below on the treatment. But otherwise, we'll discuss everything you need to know if you've been diagnosed with H. pylori. Guys, let's talk about it. Howdy, I'm Dr. Islam. I'm a board certified gastroenterologist trained at the Mayo Clinic. I've over 10 years of treating patients with all sorts of GI issues, including H. pylori, successfully. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe, and come see us up at Gastro for all your GI needs. So what exactly is H. pylori? Well, H. pylori stands for Heliobacter pylori. This is a gram-negative bacteria that commonly can affect the GI tract to manifest in many symptoms or not even manifest in any symptoms whatsoever. Now, H. pylori is one of those bugs that can live in your gut for years and never cause any problems. It can be considered what's called the normal gut flora of your GI tract. And for a lot of patients, they've had this infection and does not cause them any problems. But for other people, it can somehow trigger into manifestations of symptoms, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Most of the people who have H. pylori have had it for a long time and have had it ever since they were young. Now, it is one of the most common infections worldwide. In fact, some studies have suggested that over 50% of the world's population has been infected with H. pylori. But once again, just because you have it doesn't mean it's going to cause you harm or going to cause symptoms down the road. Now, let's break this down even further. Let's put on our science hat here. So H. pylori is a spiral-shaped bacterium that can burrow down into the lining of your stomach. Now, in there, it can create an imbalance of your GI tract, your stomach, and the acid and the protection layer of your gut. Now, normally, your stomach produces a thick acid layer to protect it from all the pathogens and all the bacteria that's going on there. But H. pylori can actually damage that protective layer, burrow itself inside the mucosa, and cause symptoms in the GI tract. So how exactly is H. pylori spread? Now, to be honest with you, we're not quite clear. Now, the most common way it's spread that we know of is fecal oral. Ah, oh, I know, disgusting. So it's thought to be passed through through food, water, even utensils. Now, it's more common in areas with poor sanitation, but that doesn't mean it cannot happen anywhere. So what are the symptoms of H. pylori? How do you know if you have it? Now, like I said before, many people with H. pylori don't have symptoms, so I don't even worry about it. But one of the most common symptoms is a general category called dyspepsia. This includes indigestion, bloating, upset stomach, not feeling good, some nausea, poor appetite, a gnawing pain. These are under the categories of dyspepsia, which it may sound like a common symptom that a lot of people have. This is what makes H. pylori very tricky to diagnose without proper testing. A second symptom are symptoms of a gastric ulcer, gnawing pain that goes into your stomach, typically in the epigastric area that's related to eating. Or you can also have a bleeding ulcer from this in which you vomit blood, have black stools, or anemic. The third way it can present as an actual cancer, H. pylori is considered a carcinogen in terms of its risk for developing cancer. And so it's the most common cause of gastric cancer in the world. And those symptoms include getting full quicker, weight loss, nausea and vomiting, Another way that H. pylori can manifest is also lymphoma. It's called malt lymphoma. This is a type of lymphoma that causes your stomach to not move at all. It's almost called like a leather type stomach, like a football. And because of that, your stomach can't move, it can't contract, it can't move things along. And so you also have symptoms of nausea, poor appetite, but also weight loss. So if you're having these symptoms, how do we diagnose it? There are four main ways. One way is a blood test. Let me tell you straight up, Never have someone diagnose you with H. pylori with a blood test. It will always be positive. Even if you had H. pylori when you were like a three month old, it will be positive, it never goes away. And so if someone's gonna tell you have H. pylori, make sure they do not use a blood test. A second way to test is do what's called a breath test. We actually breathe into a machine. We give you a reagent and with that, you breathe into a machine and we see if there's a peak that tells you if you have H. pylori. 
if you have it, it's a very effective non-invasive way to see if you have H. pylori. Here's the issue with the blood test is that you have to be off of PPIs, bismuth, and antibiotics for at least two weeks, preferably four weeks, so you don't get a false negative test. Meaning, if you took your Nexium a week before your test, you may have a falsely negative test. Third way is the stool testing, where we actually look into your stool and see if you actually have the antigen for H. pylori. This also is a non-invasive way for us to diagnose it. However, like the breath test, you have to be off PPIs, bismuth, and antibiotics for at least two weeks, preferably four weeks before that test. Because once again, if you take Pepto-Bismol, like a week before your stool testing, you may have a falsely negative test. Now this leads to the fourth test, my preference, which is an upper endoscopy or an EGD. Because with that, I can physically take a look inside your stomach, see what's going on, take biopsies, culture those biopsies, and see exactly if you have H. pylori or not. Now the good thing about the biopsy is that it's not effective by taking PPIs, bismuth, or antibiotics. But also it gives me more information for what's going on. I can see if there's an ulcer. I can see if there's a cancer. I can see if there's lymphoma. I can see if there's something else going on to explain your symptoms besides just doing the non-invasive testing. This is typically the preference for most gastroenterologists to see exactly what's going on to give you a direct diagnosis, but also visualize how your GI tract looks. So what are the risks of untreated H. pylori? So I kind of mentioned them briefly, but let's talk about them in more detail. So first off, you'll have continuing symptoms bloating, distension, not feeling good, those are Pepsia type symptoms, they won't get better. But the biggest risk factor I always tell my patients is that there is an excellent chance if you don't treat it, you're going to develop either a cancer or a lymphoma or both. And gastric cancer is one of those cancers that you do not want. Unfortunately, it is typically universally fatal. By the time we diagnose it, it's already spread and it just ends up being a death sentence for a lot of our patients that have gastric cancer. Now it's a little bit different with lymphoma because this lymphoma actually is very treatable and curable. In fact, most patients who get H. pylori treatment can actually get be cured of their lymphoma. And so if you happen to have lymphoma, it tends to be a lot more of a better prognosis than having the cancer. But in addition, you can also have that risk of developing an ulcer. And ulcers are nothing to mess around with. Ulcers can lead to bleeding and death. In fact, I have patients who have unfortunately bled to death because of their ulcer. So if you have H. pylori, make sure not only do you take the treatment, but you finish the treatment as well. As for prevention, what can you do? Here are a few tips. Number one, wash your hands regularly, especially before you eat. Number two, drink water from a safe, clean source. Number three, avoid sharing foods or utensils with people you don't know or if it's not sanitized. And then lastly, eat in a place that's clean. Try not to eat in places that are not sanitary. All right guys, that was a wrap up on H. pylori. Everything you need to know from a GI doctor on your diagnosis. Hope you found this video informative. If you want to learn more information about what you can do for H. pylori, comment down below. Let me know what you guys want to hear. And if you want more information on what you can do to improve your gut health, don't forget to click on these videos so we can find out what's going on and get you feeling better. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you guys on future videos.